If you Google where to go in Seoul, you'll probably get some, no offense, quite boring answers. You'll probably get something like how to go to Namsan, how to go to the top of Jamsil Tower, which to be honest are all things that you probably should do. But if you're looking for that local, authentic feeling of Seoul, then you've come to the right place. I'm Cecil. I'm a professional cozy girl. I'll personally take you around to all of the different Ku districts of Seoul. So first, let's go with my favorite Ku, which is Swing Sangu. Let's go! Love that will never need to hide Love will always rise above Whatever comes, we will be just fine If I am yours and you are mine Yongsan is the most central district of Seoul and it's located on the northern bank of Han River. If you ask me, and probably also a lot of young other cool hip people, they'll say that Yongsan is the place to hang out if you like that young hip cool vibe. I'm telling you guys, forget about Mapo. We don't play with the Hunde boys. <laughs> currently in Shinyongsan, an area that's mostly known for it being the place where the hype entertainment is. Which is not really why I come here though. I come here for the extremely cozy hidden cafes that not many people know about. It's these very old, um, very old style houses that aren't entirely Hanuks but aren't entirely regular houses either. And they've been around for forever. They are almost falling apart and people are renovating them into like a more cafe that keeps the quality of the old house but still is like renovated and new and cool and one of these cafes are my favorite in all of Seoul it's called Travertine so let me take you there first which is one of the reasons why I love it, but not the only reason why I love it. One, the interior is just gorgeous as you saw, and then two, the coffee is amazing. They do it very well and thoroughly. And again, they have oat milk. So for you who are lacto intolerant, I recommend. Now that we're caffeinated, it's time for lunch. I came to this Samgitan place last weekend with my parents-in-law and Jake. And my parents-in-law said that it was some of the best Samgitan that they've had. Although my experience with Korean food is not as broad as theirs, obviously, I could only agree. It was delicious and they have kimchi chan and kamcha chan and all of these things as well. This sweet waiter has actually given me some ketone as a service. It's very nice. My Korean teacher told me that samgyetang is usually eaten in the springtime here in Korea because you do fight the heat with more heat and this samgyetang is boiling hot when it came out. Me personally, I do prefer eating this when it's cold outside just because it's so hot and it makes me feel really warm inside and it's just a super delicious lightweight meal. My father-in-law recommends to eat this by eating the meat of the chicken first, then take out the bones and throw them in the bucket, and then the remaining rice which you found inside of the chicken. You have to mix that up with the soup and then eat it like chuk, which is a rice porridge. Lastly, you always get samgyetang together with a shot of insamju, which is Korean ginseng shot. It's alcoholic and you don't drink it all at once. Drink it over two or three sips and it warms you up very nicely. It tastes amazing. This street behind me here is Itaewon Main Street. You've probably heard about Itaewon before and if you would like to check out this area, probably like I did when I first came to Korea, which was just go to Itaewon Station and walk around the station, see what there was. You will not find many cute places by doing that and I quickly found that out, so you really have to search it up on Neighbor. Speaking of Neighbor, everything that I'll visit in this video, it's down below in the description box and if you don't know how to read Hangul or if you don't know how to like 
copy paste to address. Here's how you do it, here's how I do it, so you can just follow that. I'm really only here on Pizza One Main Street because of one store that I want to show you. Every time I show it on my social media, everyone freaks out. It's just such a great place, both for gift shopping or for yourself. But after that, we're heading off the Main Street into the cute areas where all the cozy girls are hanging out. <laughs> Let's go. This is my favorite place to stop by just to see if they have any new things. I cannot pass by the store without going in and saying hi to the owners. They collect these art pieces from all over Asia, mainly Korea and China, and they're so beautiful and unique and nothing else exists like it. So I think this is such a special store to check out and it's really affordable too. From the main road, I've walked down towards the river again, which is down towards Hanamdong. And that is because I have intention of showing you some really cute shopping places. If you do Google places to shop in Yongsan or in Seoul in general, you tend to get very sort of not very creative <laughs> search results. One of them is like Yongsan Eye Park Mall, I think it's called, is Yongsan Station. It's not fun. The only thing they have is Zara, H&M and Uniqlo, to be honest. <laughs> so down here in Hanam, this is where usually the pop-ups of new stores and of online stores that only will be there for a little bit pops up. Either here or Songsu, but today we're showing Yongsan, so I will take you through a few of the shops that I usually shop for. Let me take you to my favorite stores. <laughs> brand is called Kijun and it's for you cozy girls who really like to be a bit more comfy or sporty in it. This brand has a lot of really cool jackets and they do have really cute track suits as well. I personally love their leather jackets and they have a section of jewelry as well that's really cute. March Sherwood is one of the Korean brands that really gained popularity over the past couple of years. I personally love the brand because of their bags. I honestly want to buy one of them so much. They're so cute. I do have a couple of their clothing pieces as well and they're also very lovely, but compared to the quality of the bags, the clothing falls short a little bit here. I'm out back at the main road again because I'm crossing over to the other side of Hanam. I am going to check out one of my favorite stores that opened in at like a physical space. It's called Gloney and I love all their stuff so I'm really excited to check it out. Gloney is also a newer popular brand that gained popularity online mainly and I would describe the clothing as kind of like the Korean version of Brandy Melville. The sizes are most likely one size and sometimes they do have two different sizes. It generally fits a very petite frame, but they do have a couple of lines that does fit me. One of them is their neutral or basics lines, which I really love actually. The quality is great. They just have so many nice and cute accessories in here, so I really recommend you to check it out. This behind me here is Liu Museum. It's a museum that both has like a mix between old Korean things and then newer upcoming artists. To be honest, I just really like the museum because it's in such a quiet neighborhood in Hanamdong. It always just has such cozy, calm vibes in there. So let's go in and see if there is any tickets available. You usually have to book online and it's actually quite easy to do if you don't know Korean. They have a Korean version of their website, but there was no available ones online yesterday for me. But you can go in and book tickets here as well. So let's see if there is an available spot. Staring at the window on a cloudy morning Trying to lick her wounds while the tea is warming Sometimes it's like a bird has never shipped out Sometimes you go around and I never run the rail This week has been a mess but I'm gonna tell you We're a bit at work, gonna make it brand new We're gonna play the way for I come back to most people, what Handamdung is known for is its extravagant lifestyle. There are a couple of different areas in Seoul where you connect to wealthy people and celebrities and expensive stores and such. Specifically here in Handam is where a lot of those really, really luxurious apartment complexes are. 
One of them are the hill where a couple of the BTS members live. The other one are 9-1, which is where G-Dragon lives. This is common knowledge, by the way, I'm not spoiling anything. And we have um, UN Village, which is also an extremely popular place for very wealthy business owners and celebrities. Hebang meaning freedom and Chun meaning village. This place is um, one of the most diverse places in Seoul and it is one of the most well-preserved places if you ask me. A lot of places in Seoul, especially older places like this place is, are being torn down and new buildings are being built and mainly like high-rise apartment complexes. Here, the first floor in all of these buildings are turned into businesses and a lot of them are run by foreigners here actually. More often than not, very cute cafes or restaurants, wine bars, bars in general. This one here is one of my favorite wine bars. It's called Wild Dog Canteen. But come here on a weekend and enjoy the nightlife. It's freaking amazing. That bar up there, one of my favorite bars. <laughs> Market, and it is one of the hidden gems that I really wanted to show you. I come here a lot and I love this place. The history of it is quite interesting. It was founded or opened in 1953 where it was known for selling lots of North Korean food made by Koreans who fled the war and started a life here. Then in the 70s it turned into the center for knitwear industry where the market was sort of a hub for that and then in around 2015-ish there was a new incentive from the Seoul City Hall which was called the Seoul Urban Revitalization Program, something along those lines. It was there to transform old and dying neighborhoods like this one into something new, exciting, a hub for culture and cafes and youth and I think with this market specifically they did it fantastic for the past couple of years. They They've been building this like overhead uh, plastic sort of like roof over the market so that when it rains you can still walk here and now it's like fully done and I just love what all of these young business owners are doing with all the stores there's so many hidden bars here if you come here there are some of the doors that are like this narrow and you have to go through them and then walk up a little sketchy stairway and there is amazing bars cafes <sighs> yeah i'm gonna take it to my favorite cafe in this area called upstanding coffee now it's so nice this can't take a word. but it's gonna be a record and if it won't be So that you can cry on so cry. This cafe is called Upstanding Coffee and it has three different floors all connected by this incredibly beautiful staircase. You get a little bit dizzy going up and down but it's so pretty. The design in here is just gorgeous. I love how they took this old building and just made it super industrial but very cozy at the same time. The coffee is always good, the people are always super nice. I'm sitting on the rooftop which has like nice view over Shinhun Market but you can also sit on the second floor which has a big like community table like that. I can't really film because there's a lot of people down there right now but that's also a really cute and cozy place and then in the evening you can get a cocktail here if you would like. last recommendation to you is probably my favorite dinner restaurant in all of Korea. I know that says a lot. It's that good. It's a traditional Korean makgeolli place with like reinvented traditional Korean dishes. The owner Nara also has makgeolli making classes in her restaurant so I will leave all the information down below if you would like to try to learn how to make makgeolli yourself. <laughs> 
That is delicious. Honestly, if you go to the like honey jam and you go and you want to buy makoli there, you'll get something that's really thin. Something like this. This is like how makoli is supposed to be, if you ask me, because the, the one you get in the honey jam is very watered down with water. And this place, Yunjudang, has a lot of really good high quality makolis that are the proper thickness. They're much more thick and they're just really good. This Nara made herself. And she also has lots of yakju, which is the top part, the more clear part of the makoli making process. At least that's what Stephanie and, and Nara is telling me. I don't know shit, I'm just, I just know things that they tell me because they're the makoli pros. <laughs> but it's delicious. I've been taking the makuli classes here for about a year now. It started off with just a one-day class I took with my husband and I just fell in love with it. And then Nara, the teacher that you probably saw in the video earlier, <laughs> she teaches the class and just from the one-day class experience it was so much fun. And it was actually it's quite romantic, like making it, I don't know. I really love making things with my hands and since then I've just fell in love with making all kinds of Korean traditional alcohol. And yeah, if you're in Seoul, um, Nada also can teach in English and I'll probably help her as her assistant. Her English um, assistant? English assistant. But she's good, yeah. yeah. So I recommend it. It's a really fun experience and you get to take it home and you know, you brew your own alcohol. It's fun. Oh, I love it. I want to do it too. <laughs> 